All right, welcome to Murder Mesa for a five-player FFA. We have got some random spawns. We have got some random faction selections and some random colors. But kicking it off in the top right-hand corner, playing the Yellow Soviets, this is May Valley. As the green playing the allies, this is Football Guy. As the purple playing the Soviets, it's Pew Pew Laser. Always glad to see that guy just because he has a goofy name. But as the blue playing Empire, it's Phil Flat 111. Or Phila Flat 111? But no, Phil Flat 111. As the orange, uh, this is top. Pew Pew Laser, May Valley, top, football guy, and flat. Five random players, five random factions, or at least a decent distribution of factions. And unfortunately, uh, the overlay is not quite ordered in the same uh, way that they are ordered on the map. I don't know if that's actually possible to automate, but uh, we will survive just by having to reference the colors even though they are not in the correct order. And uh, as we get into an FFA, things are going to get crazy and their spawn positions may move anyways, or they their main bases may actually end up rotating around. So, whoa, football guy going for a very fast cryo rush. And hey, why not? In an FFA, it does leave you vulnerable to getting attacked from the other direction. Like if, in this case, May Valley was going for a bit of a rush against Football Guy, he would be in a very bad situation. But in the current moment, he's totally fine. He's getting basically a kill on his purple opponent. Pew Pew Laser is getting locked down pretty hard. Unfortunately, Pew Pew Laser does have a crane, so he can potentially crush his MCV to get his economy back online and try and restabilize, or he might just run away and hide in the corner of the map. He could just drop a refinery over here and sell off his main base and then hope that Football Guy doesn't come after him, doesn't try and knock down some of his few remaining buildings. Harvester is back online for Pew Pew Laser. His income super hurt by comparison to everyone else. He's 2,000 credits behind, or maybe even 3,000 credits behind, like the next closest competitor. So his income is not good compared to everyone else. And Football Guy, he's going for that fast tier two, but he's also expanding out to the corners. So if he gets up to three refineries pretty comfortably, that fast tier two, he's not going to be really paying a price for it. He got the drop on Pew Pew Laser, and that Tier 2 is going to be useful for the rest of the game, and his economy is going to be able to stabilize. So he's going to be in a pretty good spot as long as he doesn't get double teamed. May Valley spreading out, taking four refineries quite quickly. At least four. No Oil Derricks, it looks like, though. Oil Derrick did get grabbed by Football Guy instead. And crates are on. Something I didn't realize, but hey, we got a, we got some crates out on the map, so it's always nice to see players just having a good time playing with crates. Even though the Red Alert 3 crates, they're not super exciting. They are, you know, the sign of a good time. Oh, bears ready to go. All of those jabs getting eliminated. That was almost an amazing attack by Football Guy, and then it just turned into a terrible attack by Football Guy. Pew Pew Laser with a pretty hard shutdown of those Javelin Soldiers. And this uh, sneaky flak cannon kind of hiding next to that war factory there. I'm not sure that he actually spotted that flak cannon at first. Sentry gun goes down, and the cryocopter is going to be getting pushed away. Uh, eventually, these strikers managed to kill off that ore refinery. Although, what actually happened to Orange's uh, refinery? Either it deployed or it got cleaned up. So four refineries, four top, but not five refineries, which is, I assume, what he was hoping for. Oil Derrick getting cleaned up. Two Oil Derricks have now been killed by May Valley. 
Maybe not a third oil, Derek, but May Valley says, if I can't have them, no one can. And that's a pretty good strategy in general, making sure that your opponents don't have those extra oil, Derek's, don't have those free resources just ticking away. Football guy expanding out to the corners, but Phil Flat going to be going to the high ground. Takes two of the refineries in the middle of the map, and I believe that is the Murder Mesa for which the map is named. So he is going right for the middle of the murder and hoping that the middle of the Mesa will keep him safe, keep those refineries safe for now. Maybe no one will look there in the middle of the map. They'll all be distracted by the fights happening all around the water edges. Ah, a couple of MIGs showing up. A couple of Strikers will pay the price, but only two Strikers. The others do manage to transform, and the MIGs will be able to escape. Meanwhile, this last Striker in the sky may actually need to reposition to kind of the north side of that refinery so he doesn't get sniped, but it doesn't matter. A little bit of friendly fire there as he crashes down, and the Strikers are just going to transform and go for that Crusher Crane, hoping to eliminate it before they themselves are eliminated. And, well, that honorable discharge, it doesn't even matter. An additional Striker showing up for top. This is not a very cost-effective attack, but he is doing some damage, just uh, not very much. Definitely less damage than you would hope for five or six Strikers. That was a lot of strikers in total that he built, especially uh, when you count the first group plus that last one at the end. Uh, Salt Destroyer, very low on health. Mine coming in here from the Flak Trooper gets the kill, and it's going to be up to this or Tesla Trooper to kill off the Riptide. Football guy keeping up the attacks. Nice by Pew Pew Laser saves that Tesla Trooper. What a cute little micro move there by Pew Pew Laser. Uh, he does still have to worry about this aircraft carrier, which is the new threat on the horizon for Pew Pew Laser to worry about. Pew Pew Laser has been fending off attacks from Football Guy basically from minute one of this game. Football guy showing up with that cryocopter rush right at the beginning of the game and causing problems, and that is basically not stopped from minute one. Top pushes away Phil Flat, and Phil Flat is going to be at five refineries in a couple of moments. He's going to be striking the hospital of Pew Pew Laser, so no more free infantry repairs for Pew Pew Laser. And, uh, well... Aircraft carrier getting shut down by that terror drone. That is definitely a good move. Does eliminate that run of, uh, of drones. And now second run of drones gets eliminated by that terror drone. Sentry bombers come in. Where, where are they going? Did they already drop their bombs somewhere else? Another bullfrog shows up. And this is just... This is such a low-tech hold of an aircraft carrier and a cryocopter. It's bullfrogs and terror drones, but the aircraft carrier can't do anything as long as the terror drones are there. I'm not sure what these sentry bombers are doing. They're, they're roaming around the map looking for something. I guess they eventually... Okay, they do drop their bombs. They That was a weird pattern. I don't know that uh, that was the best attack angle on that refinery end. This cryocopter is getting some damage done, but eventually the cryocopter does go down, and this aircraft carrier will be eliminated eventually, but it will get at least one bombing run before it goes down. And it's going to be forced to return home. Meanwhile, in the north, May Valley versus Top. Top gets some damage done, but backs off. Top not super interested in the fight. And uh, that... <laughs> this is not the most efficient attack. Uh, Nagatana Cruisers, Naganata Cruisers, Torpedo Type S. What a weird name for that, uh, for that ability. Ultra Torpedoes I get, but Torpedo Type S, I'm not sure that that makes a lot of sense. One Twin Blade goes down, May Valley hoping to eliminate this Empire Navy with the use of those Twin Blades. And, uh, in the meantime... Phil Flat has finally taken this expansion in the north. This guy's going to have a lot of refineries if they ever stop getting harassed by his opponents. Not sure how much Phil Flat actually has built up in his main. Okay, he is going tier three, kind of late. He's got a lot of power plants, but I guess he has a lot of refineries. So, you know, he needs a lot of power plants to keep those refineries running. Or refinery did get cleaned up. Pew Pew Laser and, uh, and Football Guy have been having this... Eternal struggle 
Dolphin's coming up. Dolphin kills off one Terror Drone, but the second one manages to get off the in fact, and these Terror Drone, this third Terror Drone is going to escape to the land. May Valley swinging over the middle of the map. May Valley may actually be building up the ultimate Twin Blade army. Uh, if this game comes down to May Valley winning with Twin Blades, well, I'll be mildly annoyed. But I feel like, you know, the rest of this game, it has a variety of actions, so we can forgive May Valley doing something that we've seen many, 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 many times before. And in this case, Football Guy, who has been entirely focused on Pew Pew Laser this entire game, unable to kill Pew Pew Laser, but has been vulnerable to an attack from the north, and that vulnerability is finally being paid off here. Harvester goes down, Refinery goes down, and this might be, these two power plants were going to be enough to send them into low power mode. But only one of them gets eliminated. MIGs show up. And, uh, well, could go for the barracks and the war factory after that. But killing off those power plants would stop any uh, multi-gunner turrets from being utilized in this defense. Javelin soldiers get shut down. And this is a weird split of attacks from these Twin Blades. They cannot find a single target to kill off. MiGs get the kill on that sentry bomber. And everything else is going to try and escape. Pew Pew Laser has been defeated. Our first player to drop from the match. Win Cybert versus Spartacus 1v1. That's happened, like, tons of times in the past. So, win, I guess, like, 10 years ago was the first time. But since then, uh, I don't know. The last time Spartacus and I played... Yeah, Torpedo Type S. Uh, the last time we played was, I think, the Napoleonic VIP minigame. I think that was the last time we 1v1. I don't remember how that went. We might have, uh, he might have beaten me in that one. Twin Blades looking for some kills. Multi-gunner turrets are here, and Twin Blades hoping to be able to burst down this war factory. They did just mostly spend their rockets, so the timer didn't reset nicely enough. But now that Pew Pew Laser is gone, Football Guy can kind of turn his attention towards the north. Pew Pew Laser definitely opening up a lot of space for Phil Flat as well. Uh, ooh, trying to grab that money crate with an MCV. Sometimes the money crate, uh, like... I don't know, hitbox for what actually counts as collecting a money crate. Sometimes it's weird, and you can get in spots where, like, money crates will be in a weird spot, and it's really hard to actually grab them, especially with those bigger units. But the MCV gets the cash there. Fill flat, low on cash. Everyone else has at least a little bit of something in the bank. May Valley with eight, nine grand in the bank. Building up a bit of a float. Uh, you know, maybe build, like, a second naval yard or something. Drop drop an additional production facility. May Valley has a decent number of refineries, so that does explain why May Valley has so much cash. Shogun Battleships now going to be threatening. Top says May Valley doesn't need to fight one person. May Valley needs to fight two people at once. Cryocopter goes down. Football guy is going to be potentially expanding into Pew Pew Laser's base. He's been wanting to do this, I think, from the beginning of the game. And there's 33 grand in those ore nodes, so it's definitely going to be worth it if he can get up two additional refineries. That's going to be a lot of cash to bring into the late stages of this game. And he's going to need it as May Valley is coming in here, gets the kill on the Tier 3, gets the kill on the War Factory as well, and Top goes for a Fire sale? Okay, he keeps alive his two naval yards, but he's going to be selling off basically everything on land, and Top is going to be hurting pretty significantly if he uh, loses his tech and is no longer able to produce any more Shogun battleships because you're going to need those Shoguns if you want to stay late in the game. Although his MCV has survived, and for now, he's still... Well, okay, he's about to lose these, war fa these naval yards, I feel like. So goodbye to the tech. It's going to be a full tech reset for this Empire player. Oh, okay, it's not a full tech reset. A little bit of being kind of being saved there. All right, May Valley is going to drop the satellites. And at the same time, Phil Flat is going to be potentially going for the kill on that Imperial Docks. The Shogun Battleship. Half of the HP gone, and the other half to the Shogun, maybe? 
This big twin blade army has no real opposition. Uh, actually, Mass Tengu may be really the only functional way to deal with this because you can't use Sea Wings because, of course, the Twin Blades just fly over land and then now the Sea Wings can't chase. And you can't really use Strikers because they can't traverse the terrain well enough. And you're going to need a lot of MiGs or a lot of Tengus because there's a decent number of MiGs. So you're going to need a lot of Tengus, way more than he's got right here. Probably needs to go for two uh, two mecha bays, maybe even three mecha bays. Phil Flat, a hundred thousand has been harvested over the course of this game, and he has spent basically every single dollar of it. May Valley also a hundred thousand over the course of this game, and has also spent basically every single dollar of it. MCV just gets sniped, almost a one shot burst from those twin blades to snipe an MCV. That's how many twin blades May Valley has. And this has definitely turned into a three horse race. May Valley, Phil Flat, and Football Guy. One from each faction as well. One Soviet, one Empire, one Allies. And I mean, the Soviet player with that big twin blade army has a very active and agile force that can put a lot of damage basically anywhere on the map. I guess not underwater. The sea wings are safe while they're under the water. But uh, sea wings don't matter too much when they're just under the water. Goodbye to the Akula subs. The Naganata cruisers have cleaned up May Valley's naval force. And it seems like these twin blades, as powerful as they are, have not saved May Valley. But what? Oh, top goes down. Top was in the middle of crushing this little water expansion, but it just didn't matter. I mean, the Shoguns are from Phil Flat are really the the highlight unit in this army. So, but Top goes down. Unfortunately for Top, he was destined to uh, die, I think, sooner or later. He was definitely the weakest of the four players that remained in this game. And Phil Flat. Kind of the sleeper agent in the first part of this game, not really drawing a lot of attention, not really making big moves. But Phil Flat is definitely well set up for the late stages of this game. He's got 30k of income in advantage over Football Guy. So Football Guy starting out with that cryo rush at the very beginning of the game and uh, not really being able to kill Pew Pew Laser with it, at least not efficiently. And, uh, yeah. Football guy, very, very active in the early part of the game. Less active as the game has gone on. And May Valley, oh, May Valley still has the refinery in the corner. So as long as this is active, you know, always the hope of the comeback. But these two other refineries in the middle of the map as well, also the hope of the comeback. And May Valley actually has almost 10 grand in the bank. So a decent ability to rebuild. Can go for a crane to rebuild a little bit faster. Prow getting comes in. This is four Shogun battleships getting EMP'd on top of that. They need to be cleaned up. And that is a big win for Football Guy, who's going to be able to crush through this Empire Navy. The help of that Cryo Geddon freezing four Shogun battleships. That just helps him cut through this army that much faster. Dolphins, Assault Destroyers, and Cryocopters joining forces to break this Empire Navy. That was a big kill. That, sh that Cryo Geddon definitely getting a lot of value there, but the rest of the Navy was broken by the Navy of Football Guy. May Valley definitely not out of the game in the way that we often see FFAs, strong players, you know, get stabbed in the back. They become weak players. But uh, at this point, Phil Flat, he's still got a very compelling way to come back into this game. Shokun Battleships being one of those options. And Phil Flat has never really moved beyond this one mecha bay. He also does have a dojo, and this engineer has been hanging out for a while. Not sure that he has any real plans for that in the future, but Phil Flat spending his cash. He has got that macro down pat. Football Guy and May Valley both floating about 10 grand. So, oh, neutral, uh, neutral terror drone. 
Looks like, I don't know, from Pew Pew Laser or somebody. Yeah, I guess Pew Pew Laser. Uh, Terror Drone getting caught a little bit by a bug. Sometimes when a player is defeated. Well, bye-bye to the Terror Drone. Sometimes when a player is defeated. Oh, that EMP. That EMP. Crushing five. Okay, four. Crushing four Striker VXs there. And the last Striker will go down to the Cryocopters. Maybe gets crushed. No, does get shot by that Assault Destroyer. And the battle rages on in the south. Phil Flat going in an all-out assault against Football Guy. Meanwhile, quietly in the middle of the map, May Valley rebuilds that Soviet Empire. Football Guy and Phil Flat are going to kill each other. You know, stroke by stroke, they're going to be attacking each other and tearing each other down. And meanwhile, May Valley is just growing stronger and stronger, calling in satellite drops. Four power plants knocked down, as well as the nanotech mainframe almost being eliminated. And it looks like Football Guy, he's taken a lot of damage. He's still got a little bit of fight left in him. He's still got an armor facility. He's still got a seaport. He's got that tier three still pumping out units, but he has been significantly cut down. And at this point, he has burned through most of his bank. A couple of minutes ago, he did have 10 grand. Second MCV goes down. So bye-bye to that MCV. But he did have 10 grand a couple of minutes ago, and he does have basically nothing in the bank now. So he's lost. Almost his whole army has lost one of his major expansion locations, the old base of Pew Pew Laser, and uh, he has lost most of his cash bank. So he is not in a great spot. May Valley, on the other hand, still floating nearly eight grand and still with the opportunity to rebuild these big twin blade numbers. It feels like it's going to come down to Phil Flat and May Valley. Oh. Twin Blades getting pushed away. This one Apollo. Not quite a match for all of those bullfrogs. It is going to be the twin frog combination. It looks like the uh, the MiGs have been put on hold for now. Shoguns do get frozen. No, only two of them get EMP'd. So Phil Flat is not going to be stopped. Football Guy still has a lot of firepower to deal with. These Shogun battleships are not going to be easy to eliminate. And Football Guy is going to try and... Oh, he's just going to try and go for the high ground. Okay. All right. This should be out of range of the Shogun battleships. I really don't imagine they can get this far inland. So Phil Flat is going to have to bust out that land army at some point, which he has kind of been building. He did build up a land army. He had a couple of Wave Force artillery. I'm not sure exactly what happened to it, but it, he had a couple of Wave Force artillery, so he does know how to build Mecha Bay units. Football guy has almost been eliminated from the water. And uh, his main base is probably going to be the next area destroyed by Phil Flat. But yeah, Phil Flat and May Valley, they may be entering into a bit of a two-horse race if Football Guy gets eliminated. I'm genuinely surprised May Valley hasn't just built like five airfields and dumped all of their cash into just Twin Blades. They're doing that, but they're just doing it slowly with only two Twin Blades building at a time. Uh, a couple of Twin Blades getting clipped by those Apollos. Shogun Battleships cleaning up most of Football Guy's base. Still hasn't eliminated the, these last two power plants. These four power plants just hanging out, still causing, uh, being useful for Football Guy. And Twin Blades getting hunted down. I think the Twin Blades are in good enough numbers to take two Strikers. Strikers may get a couple of kills in the last moments, but in the end, the Strikers do go down. Shogun Battleships circling the map, but Shogun Battleships can't reach the very center of it, so anything in the middle of the map is pretty safe. They might be able to reach this crane. I feel like that crane may be from here. They'll be able to kill the crane, but everything else is pretty safe from the Shogun battleships. So if Phil Flat loses his ability to put an army on land, then Phil Flat is going to be kind of stuck 
He's got this amazing navy, but, uh, you know, Shogun battleships, they can't do everything. They can't fly. This isn't the Corona mod. I feel like the Corona mod, you can fly Shogun battleships. Okay, maybe not Shogun battleships, but they have some very big flying units in that mod. And yeah, these Shogun battleships are kind of reaching the end of their usefulness. If Phil Flat scouted the map a little bit more thoroughly, he would find some weaknesses that he could exploit. You know, taking out these power plants, killing this refinery. But other than that, he's kind of reached the end of usefulness for his Shogun army. War Factory gets sold off. Twin Blades looking to hit and run. They've almost killed off the Defense Bureau, but they haven't quite finished it off. Crusher Crane going to be getting shut down by Skywings. And, uh, well, I guess that does stop flak cannons from being produced as quickly. Shogun's going to get it targeted down by Twin Blades. I feel like this is just free veterancy for the Twin Blades because the MiGs, the MiGs need to come over here and try and kill the Sea Wings, the Sky Wings, before they turn into Sea Wings. Ah, uh, they don't. Okay. So the MiGs losing kind of an opportunity to strike the Sky Wings and stop them from becoming Sea Wings. And this Shogun Battleship getting some free kills on uh, some of these units from May Valley. Another Sentry Bomber crashing to the ground. Another Harvester eliminated. Technically, Football Guy is still in this. He doesn't have much going on, but he's retaking Pew Pew Laser's base. That base he seemed to always want from the very beginning of the game. He's still got his MCB. He's still got his refineries. And look at that. He even deploys a barracks. So now he can do more than just build aircraft. Crusher Crane getting rebuilt my, by May Valley, but May Valley has spent their entire bank. So no more 10,000 cash just waiting to be spent by May Valley. And not even a working refinery here on the high ground. Phil Flat going to be dealing with another satellite drop. Fortunately, the strikers are out of the way. Bonk. There we go. Twin Blades, definitely in very good numbers. And now that the Crusher Crane is finishing up in a few moments. Okay, now the Crusher Crane is finished up. They can actually get uh, lots of repairs. A bit of a stalemate being produced by the position that each of the players are in. Oh, takes the temple in the middle. I love the attempt. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really work. This is a lot of Twin Blades, and they can quickly clean up that small number of uh, of jabs. MCV gets cleaned up. No way to rebuild that puppy. So bye-bye to Football Guy. He's going to load up into a Sentry Bomber, and, well, maybe he's going to be able to pull something amazing off with this Tanya. Double Evil, welcome to the stream. Your app has been doing amazingly. The recoloring has been fantastic. Everything has been working so, so well. Although this is an FFA, so the recoloring doesn't matter in this case. Uh, this time, yeah, really looking for the, the ideal spot to unload. But there are so many Twin Blades that wherever Tanya gets deployed... Uh, if it's anywhere near the Twin Blades, she'll just be instantly eliminated. All right. On top of the MCV. That's a good catch. Goodbye to that MCV. The Crusher Crane is still here. So that Tanya will be able to, uh, or that Soviet player will be able to come back from this position. But now the Twin Blades should be able to hone in on her location and eliminate her very quickly. Tanya has gone fully heroic, though. She could, uh, she could try and go up here to the north, go for the kill on that expansion. Shogun Battleship still on the low ground. Hasn't been dealt with by May Valley. May Valley losing bullfrogs one by one. Tsunami tanks and strikers making a formidable opponent, apparently, for this Soviet player. 
Football guy, now with 10 grand in the bank, I think purely because he lost his MCV, so he can't really build anything. Yeah, he can build, uh, I guess he can get his tech back up, but uh, he's got the defense bureau. So I think he can go all the way to tier three on the command hub and he can rebuild basically everything. Tsunami Tank's going to be getting frozen on the ramp, but this Terror Drone won't last forever. Terror Drone will be getting the kill on that striker. It seems, <laughs> never mind, the Twin Blades get the kill instead. And uh, well, this may be the end of May Valley. May Valley may be able to sneak out a MCV somewhere else, but the Twin Blades getting cleaned up one by one. Phil Flat may have done it. He may have broken this Soviet player, and that is going to be the end of May Valley, it seems. Crusher Crane is off the map. Only a couple of refineries remain, a couple of MiGs and a couple of Bullfrogs. Not much left for May Valley. It will not be a twin blade, uh, a twin blade victory for this Soviet player. Sea Wings do get the kill on that Tanya, and it comes down to Football Guy and Phil Flat. When I saw that Twin Blade Army building, I thought someone had sent me another replay where they just build a million Twin Blades and win the game. So, you know, I'm sorry for May Valley. Goodbye. But I am glad that it's not just Twin Blades win the game again, again, again. Because we have just seen that so, so, so many times in these FFA or team game type matches where someone just builds a million Twin Blades and then that is it. Thousand bucks for Phil Flat. I'm not sure he really needs the cash. He's garnered over 200k over the course of this game. Uh, I feel like he could probably, he's probably close to just being able to QA move into this guy's base. And uh, once again, football guy or Phil Flat, one of his weaknesses is that he has not eliminated football guy's various extremity locations. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure that could just be very easily wiped out by Phil Flat, basically for, you know, with no real opposition. And Football Guy couldn't do anything to stop it, and Phil Flat just has not done anything about that. It feels like the writing is on the wall. If Football Guy is able to pull off some kind of amazing comeback, then uh, good for him. But I just uh, I don't think that is going to happen. Sentry Bomber with Tanya would be a cool thing to see, but uh, I just somehow doubt that that is what's going to happen. Meanwhile, this big Empire Army is ready to crush this allied army. Wave Force Artillery is not present, but I feel like that's almost the only thing missing. I think that was victory by suicide. I'm not sure that any of those Empire units got very many kills on any of those allied units at all. And the result being, um, he kind of just, he kind of just killed that army by honorable discharge. <laughs> that was not a very well executed empire attack. Um, but he still won the fight just by sheer numbers. Power plant in the corner, refinery on the low ground, and Apollo's targeting down these sea wings. Now these cryocopters, they can, they could do a lot. There was a there was a vindicator or a couple of peacekeepers on the ground. Then these cryocopters could do even more. I guess if he had like six cryocopters, then he could freeze all of these units and keep them all frozen individually. Okay, four more strikers coming in. Tanya on top of a tier three. Okay, yeah, on top of a tier three mecha bay. Tanya gets one kill. Tanya gets kind of bull bugged on those buildings are on the debris. Harvester goes down. Shogun Battleship going to be getting eliminated or getting frozen. MCV is going for the pack up too late, bud. You should have done that about 20 seconds ago. And the MCV will go down. Panic setting into Phil Flat as he loses building after building. Tanya coming in for the comeback. Can Football Guy make it into the end zone? I feel like he's so close to the touchdown, but he's just not there. And suddenly it occurs to me that statistically he probably plays uh, soccer football, not American football, which is where I went. Uh, it's the last, it's a shootout? I don't know, what is football? I feel like it's, it's all about the shootouts these days, right? You, 
You end the game, and no one has scored a point, so then you go into a, uh, oh, where did Tanya go? Oh, she got into that King Oni, gets the kill on a couple of those Imperial Warriors. Ooh, that's the end of Tanya. Almost, the shootout almost worked for Football Guy, but that will be it. The real football, you mean? Well, yes, in terms of people who watch, definitely. And in terms of, like, percentage of the world that calls it football versus soccer. But, you know, things are relative. If I said football to most of the people that I interact with in my daily life, they would think American football. Not the game that you actually play with your feet. But uh, they always say that it's the British fault. It's the British's fault that we call it football. Or that we call it soccer, because it was called, like, association football, and then it got shortened to ASOC. And so we borrowed the term association football that got turned into ASOC that got turned into soccer from the Brits. Uh, that's the story, anyways. I don't know if that's actually true. It's one of those facts that you hear, and you're like, okay, I guess that could be true. And if it's not true, it doesn't change anything about the world for me, so... Tanya is ready to go again. Uh, the green dream is still alive, says Slovath. Fair enough. Fair enough. Why would you call it football since you don't really kick the ball? That's a good question. Why is American football called football? Okay, if, if we call soccer soccer because it was called association football and then it got sorted to ASOC and then that got turned into soccer, sure. But why do we call American football football? I don't know. I'm guessing there's, it's either going to be one of those things that no one knows the answer because it's just been like lost to time or it's, you know, some like, some weird turn of events. Is this Tanya going to get sniped before she gets into the Sentry Bomber? Get in there, get in there, get in there! Tanya's back in the Sentry Bomber. Here we go. Third time's the charm. Last time Tanya did a decent amount of damage, but of course, uh, Blue... Um, blue actually isn't that spread out in terms of buildings. He does still have a naval yard. So he definitely can rebuild whenever he wants. Uh, Phil Flat actually doesn't have a lot of cash in the bank. Uh, Phil Flat. Hmm. Jab's getting a lot of free damage on these sea wings. Jabs are going to be able to clean up everything, every single sea wing. Garrisoning these structures turned out to be kind of the killer move here for, uh, for football guy. Tanya goes for the kill. She gets the naval yard. So if an MCV wasn't produced, then that means that Phil Flat is just as dead in terms of production, or in terms of an MCV. As football guy, Tanya survives. The Sea Wing goes down. The Apollo's on Overwatch. This Harvester needs to switch into gun mode. But he doesn't. He doesn't switch the Harvester into gun mode. Tanya just waiting for this Harvester to step out. Tanya into the Harvester, into that refinery. And Tanya now low on health, but still alive, running away from those Shoguns. If she could get another kill, she could almost certainly go heroic with the next kill, and this striker has nothing to kill it. Tanya can't be killed by the Shoguns, apparently, but she will be killed by the Yari. No, she's back on land! The Shogun misses the shots, and she's now trapped between a rock and a hard place. And I don't know that Phil Flat actually got out the MCV. He may not have actually gotten out the MCV, which means he is just stuck with the units that he's got. And Cryocopters... They can, there's only one King Oni. Ooh, he is rebuilding his infantry army football guy. The hope is alive. Tanya is very low on health, and there is technically a hospital. So there is a, there is a path for Tanya to get some health back. But obviously, Tanya needs to, like, sneak into a unit without the Yari minisubs getting in the way. Because the Yari minisubs should be able to eliminate T Tanya at distance. All right. Shrink Ray comes in. There we go. Shrink Ray comes in. King Oni almost gets eliminated, and the stompy boys of these strikers, they do not stomp infantry like bullfrogs They just or IFBs. They just can't deal with the infantry. These cryocopters, okay, call off three of these cryocopters because you just need one cryocopter to keep freezing this guy. And uh, I guess build a Vindicator? I'm not actually sure 
why he hasn't. He has two Apollos and I think a Sentry Bomber. Well, he doesn't have a Sentry Bomber anymore, so he can build a Vindicator. <laughs> Jabs get cleaned up. One jab goes down. King Oni comes through, gets the Bull Rush off, but the Civ structure gets garrisoned by that jab who goes heroic and, uh, well, does get blasted out of there by the King Oni. Unfortunately for that Javelin Soldier, I don't think he's going to be able to kill off this Sea Wing, or that Sky Wing, rather. And that will do it. Yeah, these four Cryocopters, they're really wasting their time on, uh, on this one Striker. Green with the nutty Tanya gameplay. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. No, the cryocopters getting gunned down so close. Oh, wait, what? Did he get a spy? He got a spy. He took the King Oni with a spy. What a bribe. 40 minutes into the game, he gets a spy and he bribes the King Oni. I completely forgot about spies. I completely forgot, but spies, you can get them. And why not? Tanya over here taking all of the attention and getting a health crate. Are you kidding me? Tanya with the health crate and the hospital was grabbed as well. So he's got the repairs. Green football guy. He is in a shootout of a lifetime in this five-player FFA on Murder Mesa. It's overtime, whichever version of the sport you prefer. And the Shogun battleships, the amazing Empire Navy, which is so impressive, is useless against these buildings. And now that basically everything has been eliminated, build cryocopters and just freeze these buildings. Cryocopters and like one Vindicator, I think, are all you need because there's no more sea wings, or at least I don't think there are. Uh, no more sea wings, which means there's nothing to stop you from killing off this ore refinery with cryocopters. There's the freeze. Oh man, these strikers, these, these uh, traitor strikers bribed and turned against their allies, against their original teammates. Shogun Battleship's trying to kill off Tanya, but she's gone heroic now. She can escape to the land if she wants. She can escape those Yari mini-subs, and Football Guy has done it. No anti-air left. Every single Skywing went down over the land. The GG comes out. Phil Flat has been eliminated, and Football Guy comes through. Oh, it looked like he was low power mode as well. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, he had basically no power plants left. I think literally no power plants left. Or maybe he had one power plant left. But he had all of that production as well. So his production was half, was double time. It was half as fast as it could have been. It was slow. But what an amazing comeback there for Football Guy. And it wasn't a Twin Blade win. But the Twin Blades were definitely a part of the game. Welcome to Corporate Warfare 4, a 2v2. The team in the north unified in their color palette in a really delightful way. One allied player, one Soviet player going for that crane first. And once again, I don't actually remember their names. All right, in the north playing the blue, this is Other Dawn. And as the allies, this is you know. Meanwhile, in the south, playing the Red Empire, it's Zaid. Is that Dutch army? I don't know. It's Zaid. And as the orange allies, this is Daki. Now, if you're familiar with Red Alert 3, something looks a little bit off to you for sure. And it is mainly this player right here. You know, is a plane of color that is not actually in the game. And this is one of the cool features of Double Evil's uh, application that causes, that uh, gives me the overlay. The cat is trying to jump into my lap. The, uh, the application that he has actually has a little feature that allows you to recolor players before the game starts. And he has a feature which automatically sorts players by team. And so he's basically created a set of custom color palettes where everyone on the team will have the same 
kind of color. Obviously, red and orange aren't the same color, but it's sort of warm versus cold colors. It's a super cool little feature. It is going to be playing for the rest of the day, so it will pretty much be warm team versus cold team, or like blue team versus green team. And big thanks to Double Evil for putting this app together and also for developing extra little features like that. It's really impressive what he has been able to do with an app that runs outside of the game without actually modifying the game in any way. This is not like a mod that you have to download and install or anything like that. It's just running outside of the game and doing this kind of stuff, which actually I don't know that it'll work at the end screen. I'm trying to think if we ever discussed that. The end screen colors, the end screen colors may actually be wrong. But we'll deal with that when we get to for now. It's super cool that the team colors will be unified. So you'll always be able to tell who is on each other's team because they will look similar in that is enough about that. By the way, if I've already cast this game, uh, I don't remember, but it does look very familiar. These four players do seem very familiar, but I'm not 100% sure that I have. A couple of uh, Dojo Cores going to be making their way on to land in this Terror Drone, trying to get shut down by this Tangu. Terror Drone does go down, so that Terror Drone is not being dealt or is not having any more real stake in this game. Dojo does expand, but a multi-gunner turret shuts it down basically immediately. Yuno helping out Other Dawn to make this defense work out. Peacekeepers in the middle of the map, pushing the front line forward for Daki, and he's going to be right on top of his opponent's barracks, but also he's going to be potentially securing this airport. If he manages to sneak an engineer up there, he will be able to take that airport and get himself a little bit of an advantage if he's able to knock down his opponent's units with those repairs, always benefiting his own units. Ter uh, Tengu's going to be coming in here. Zaid going for the harassment move. His double dojo infestation didn't work out on the right side, and his double Tengu harass also didn't work out, as that prospector technically does survive. Very low on HP, but still alive. Bear comes in, a little bit of a scout there from Other Dawn. And also, you know, four players. We have all three factions represented here, two allied players. But, you know, four players and three factions, there's always going to be one repeated faction. I didn't actually check if people were playing random on this. I assume that they were choosing their factions. Low power mode for just a moment here for Daki going to be a little bit unfortunate, which actually, now that I'm looking at it, it looks orange on the minimap, but a lot of his units and buildings almost look yellow. So, uh, not really a big problem because he's the only player who's that orangey yellow player color, but I feel like the orange is normally a different color orange. Like, it's more, it's more orange. It's less yellow. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, but I feel like this color is a little bit wrong, a little bit off. Multi-gunner turret gets deployed. Pretty good income and expansion from every single player. Like, everyone got up to four refineries plus oil derricks really quickly. I think Docky is actually on five refineries, so he has gone fully saturated. And it looks like Yuno and Other Dawn have decided to take those water expansions out on the edge of the map. So hopefully they're able to keep hold of those and uh, don't lose control of them. Hammer Tank comes through, couple of crushes there, gets a Javelin Soldier as well before the Peacekeepers get pushed away. Hammer Tank's going to be making short work of this refinery. Daki had five refineries, but now he's going to be falling down to four. Hopefully, he doesn't lose that oil, Derek, because his income is pretty solid right now, but he wants to keep it that way. You know, and Other Dawn going to be making some good progress. Still, no one has grabbed that airport in the middle of the map. A little bit surprised that no one has. The uh, allied players do benefit from it quite a bit. Bullfrogs are here. Tangu's going to be taking some pretty heavy damage, but they're going on a suicide mission to kill those cryocopters. They get both of them, but only one Tangu escapes, and now the Apollo goes for revenge and gets knocked down. That Apollo not able to secure the revenge kill on that last Tangu. A heavy price was paid, but ultimately the Tangu did escape. The cryocopters went down, 
and the reset has happened. Uh, Tsunami Tank, kind of, uh, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> that one guy, he got an order that no one else received, and now he actually does survive. I cannot believe that Tsunami Tank escaped the fire of all of those hammers, of all of those peacekeepers. And yeah, what a combination. Hammer tanks and peacekeepers. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good combo. Peacekeepers are good. Hammer tanks are good. And if you guys are coordinating, especially over voice comms, then I can definitely see that being a very powerful combination. All right, finally, that tsunami tank did go down. It took a little while longer, but it did eventually go down. Daki channeling his inner Zugspitze, building these defensive walls to delay out this game. Although, Zugspitze was also using walls as uh, as force fields, which was super impressive to see and led to a lot of turning around a lot of situations in very cool ways. Tsunami Tank going to be getting eliminated. The wall's kind of working against the team in the south. Those Tsunami Tanks kind of getting caught, which, you know, you could blame that on the Red Alert Free pathing engine and uh, movement system. But ultimately, these walls kind of working against Zaid in that moment. This Tsunami Tank, though, just a little bit suicidal. Athena Cannon now on the front line. So this allied army is starting to grow a bit stronger. Oh, that's a nice freeze on the infantry. There's still ton, uh, tons of units left over, but that little clump of infantry is removed from the next moments of this battle. Walls haven't been broken through yet, and there's going to be the first super weapon from Other Dawn. He is way over. Oh, and okay, never mind. He just finished up a super reactor, so he's very comfortable on power now. Athena Cannon's going to be fighting each other over the wall, and the building does get evac'd. Yuno and Other Dawn not able to press into Daki's force field. This double wall setup has completely saved the team in the south. Which, uh, those Tsunami Tanks, those are the only things not saved. Those are the only things on the outside of the wall. Zaid, unfortunately, losing a big chunk of his army. He's going for the rebuild on Tangus. He hasn't gone Tier 3, but he has not gone Tier 3 out on the water either. Okay. I was expecting some Shogun Battleships, but no Shogun Battleships yet. Zaid is kind of lagging behind most other players. Yuno is actually the worst off in terms of total resources gathered. Only at 36k in the collective bank for Yuno. And meanwhile, Zaid is the next lowest at 46,000. So definitely an advantage for the team in the south. But at the same time, Yuno has been doing a good job of keeping those units alive. So even though Yuno hasn't spent a lot of cash, you know, has spent cash in ways that are really advantageous, like Athena Cannons and Cryocopters, although he did lose the Cryocopters already in this game. Busting through the wall, but this is a very disorganized attack. The Athena Cannons pop their Aegis Shield, and they're able to continue the force fields, continue absorbing damage without really engaging. One Athena goes down. And the re-engage might be where things actually take off for this game. Cryoshot going to be coming down. Hammer Tanks getting separated away from their friends. And Daki's infantry army may be the only thing that's left, but it is still powerful and able to knock down those units. Aegis Shield gets popped. A lot of Tangus on top of the Athenas with that honorable discharge. They are taking down the Athenas as they expire themselves. Emperor's Rage slowing down their movements, but it just doesn't matter. And Daki has reformed his front line. He has kept his Athena cannons mostly alive. And enough of them are alive that... Wait a second. There we go. I didn't realize you guys could not see two of the players in this game. Sorry about that. Uh, but they're back now. So there you go. You can see them now. Jabs getting picked off one by one. You can see the uh, the other two players. That's another thing that Double Evil has done is he auto-sorts players based on their in-game team. Finally, Tier 3 is done. And so I don't have to reorder their names. 
so that it matches, so that teams are grouped together. He does that automatically, which is just another fantastic thing that his app takes care of. Tangu's on the rebuild. Lots of Tangu's. After those tsunami tanks got taken out a couple of times, Zaid says, I'm not building any more tsunami tanks. I don't trust them. Although he did get a couple of strikers, he's going to be able to do some damage to Yuno's navy. A couple of Apollos going to be showing up, but they won't be able to do anything about the Tangu's on the ground. One striker does go down, the other manages to transform. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, the carnage from the V4s is evident. The airport still uncaptured, but has been leached nearly to death. It is still here, but it's almost depleted. You're not going to get much more health out of that baby. Vacuum Imploder less than two minutes away. Iron Curtain less than 20 seconds away. Hammer Tank goes down. And Daki's expansion over here. Only one multi-gunner turret. This is definitely a bit of a fault of the team in the north. Daki is basically getting free reign with that expansion over there. He has not been harassed hardly at all. And now he's going to be looking to take two additional expansions. So Daki is going to potentially be at six refineries. And he is going to be completely comfortable in that income. But uh, he has not been harassed basically at all. For a, for a team with as many aerial tools as Soviet and Allied team combined has, they have not done anything with uh, harassment around the edges. No cryocopter vindicator combos, no twin blades sneaking around the edges. This expansion has gone unharassed. Well, low power mode for Daki. Not too bad, though. He can get his power back quite quickly. Uh, Tangu's going for the kill on this MCV. They may actually get it, especially with Honorable Discharge. They're going to get the kill of Yuno's MCV, and that is going to be a full tech reset. Cryo Shot fires off, but this time it's mostly dodged. Only a couple of jabs get grabbed by that. Akula Sub's going to be trying to respond to this Shogun battleship threat, and the Nagatagana cruisers are going to be turning and running point. One cruiser goes down. But that is not the end of this of, the, of this Akula subs. They're going to have to uh, wait a couple of more moments before they actually die. Daki is held off on the front lines well enough. Multigunner turret there to keep that expansion safe. Vacuum Imploder is ready. I mean, I don't know. Going for these Athena cannons wouldn't be the worst target in the world. And it would allow him to allow them to uh, make some serious headway. Although going for these Shogun battleships also wouldn't be the worst target in the world. One of them does get frozen. IFVs and cryocopters, a somewhat unlikely combination, but it's getting the job done. And meanwhile, the vacuum imploder has been sniped or sold off. Iron Curtain fires off, and these hammer tanks are going to be still not really engaged in the fight because of these walls. The Iron Curtain walls, and he's shooting them. Unfortunately for Other Don, he did not manage to get a lot done with that Iron Curtain timer, although he does still have a couple of tanks under its influence. Never mind. Vacuum Imploder is back online. He rebuilds it, and this is an absolute carnage, carnival of carnage. Daki bringing those late game units back to the front line. Tons of cryocopters in the sky. And this attack went terribly for Other Dawn, who got his units so split up and spread out by those walls that it ended the game. What a bizarre <laughs> last couple of minutes there. And I don't even know what to say. That was such a chaotic kind of nonsense game. Uh... Uh... I don't know. That was kind of a weird game. Uh, yeah. There we go. All right, this is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Snowplow for this 1v1 in the north. This is the orange player whose name I already forgot. The Orange Soviets. 
And in the south, as the purple allies, this is Daki, who I can remember because their name is only four letters long. There we go. Ebka. That's why I couldn't remember it. It is Ebka, the orange Soviets in the north. I don't know why Daki's... Oh, actually, the, the icon is showing up. That's great. Okay, so the icon shows up for you guys on my display of the HUD for whatever reason. The allied logo doesn't show up, so it's just like it's just a kind of a box. It's just a little outline of a box, but it looks like it works on your guys' side. So that's great. Ebka versus Daki. This is Soviets versus allies on a map that is considered basically by everyone to be allied favor. Now, it doesn't mean Ebka's dead in the water, but that middle position with your MCV is so powerful for controlling the map. You shut down the bridges on the edges, and then you plant your MCV somewhere near the middle of the map, and it is so difficult for non-allied players to break that position. We'll see what exactly happens. The airfield comes up for Daki. He's going to need another power plant soon if he wants to keep the lights on. But for now, he's going to be doing a little bit of hunting. It is going to be the forward refinery position, so Ebka thinks he will be able to hold off this allied aggression. He thinks he will be able to hold this position and keep his opponent at bay. So far, all of the bridges are still up. And that first Vindicator gets an eye on everything that's happening in the north, but... Not really too interested in making any bombing runs. There are, uh, you know, there are no soft targets to immediately kill, so you'd just be dropping bombs on a building just to soften it up a little bit, not necessarily going for a kill. Peacekeeper's going to be putting a little bit of hurt on that refinery, trying to force a response from the Soviet player. Ebka does bring the sickle forward. Hammer tanks are probably on the horizon, but not here just yet. No, the MCV is packed up and is heading to the high ground, so hammer tanks are still a little ways away. One Vindicator goes down. A good kill there for Ebka. By the way, a big thanks to Double Evil for putting together this overlay. If you stick around for the whole VOD when we get into the team games, you're going to be seeing some pretty cool features at play which I guess aren't really part of the overlay, but they are enabled by his app that runs the overlay. So they are related, and it is a very custom, cool, a very cool custom feature that he built, which is one of those things where it's like, oh, I didn't even realize that was possible. Like this harassment of the allied refinery going to be sneaking in there with a sickle, a double pushback, the refinery getting harassed, and at the same time, the sickle going to be keeping those peacekeepers at bay. Refinery comes back online. The bullfrogs will be able to escape. No kills on the Vindicators, but that's okay. One sickle for that harassment while you're establishing your fort. That's actually not a bad trade for this Soviet player. The super reactor is very much delayed from what we would typically see, but getting a fourth refinery on Snowplow... Probably worth delaying the super reactor. This is not a refinery you can count on. It's basically paid for itself, you know, maybe not with the reactors, if you factor in the cost of the reactors as well. But, uh, yeah. Sentry gun gets started. Definitely a little bit late to be starting the sentry gun when there are three riptides here, two of them putting pretty heavy damage onto that refinery. Terror drone does get the infect again a little bit late. This refinery is going down regardless. And the sentry gun, not enough cash in the bank to finish it off quickly, I guess. But Ebka is going to lose that refinery position and not much more he can do about that. The sentry gun does finish and the refinery restarts. So Ebka thinks he's going to get at least another two grand out of this location. Okay, never mind. He cancels it. I think I agree with that. Hammer Tank's now coming out for our Soviet player. Refinery goes down. Vindicator's easily able to avoid the Bullfrogs heading out over the water. We should be... I would want to see either tech or an expansion from our allied player. It feels like Daki is uh, playing this one a little bit slow. He has gone for all three production facilities, so he can build, and he has a barracks, so technically all four. He's got literally everything at his disposal, which uh, normally you do sell off that naval yard. One Vindicator goes down, the other two do escape. Normally you sell off the naval yard, but if you are planning to go for assault destroyers or for aircraft carriers, then it does make sense. 
Still no tier two. This is a super delay on tier two. I cannot believe how late this allied player is getting his tier two. It's low power mode, only by 50 points though. So a power plant will clear that up quite nicely or he may be forced to sell off this multi-gunner turret. Power almost back online. There we go. He's finally back up and running. Multi-gunner turret down to half health. A nice catch there for Doc, uh, for EBK. Ebka and a fourth refinery now out on the water. That's going to be a solid spot. This is kind of reminding me of that, what was it, like 12-12 versus Harlan? It was a Soviet versus Allies, I believe, although uh, we were heading towards Kirov's at this point. Prior shot does catch that Harvester. Vindicators, good job dodging those bullfrogs for sure. And Terradrone gets the infect on the Prospector. No player has killed the bridges, which is a little bit surprising, you know, heading towards the 10 minute mark in a snowplow game. And I love that the Terradrone gets back inside of the walls. That is perfect. Uh, Vindicators? Wait, is he sending a Vindicator over there? Vindicators are going to be needed to stop these hammer tanks at the front. So there is definitely a possibility that that terror drone sort of gets a free kill on another harvester if Daki is not paying attention. So somewhat fortunately, he's kind of low on cash. So he's either paused that. Okay, he does kill off the, the terror drone. He did manage to sneak that out, which is kind of a bold choice to use all of the Vindicators to kill the one terror drone. When you've got this many hammer tanks at the front line, he is confident in his defense. And so far... It is paying off. Hammer Tank's going to be backing away. And now we're into a little bit of a stalemate from these two players. One Vindicator down, second does escape. Twin Blades would be the perfect complement to this force from the Soviet player. Would love to see an airfield sooner rather than later. All right, another multi-gunner turret goes down. A little bit of a trade here for the Soviet player, but doesn't lose a hammer tank. So as long as he... Okay, I spoke too soon. Hammer tank does go down, and that is going to be it for that little bout. Another Vindicator goes down. Hammer tank does survive, though. Softening up the hammer tanks is a good plan. But again, it feels like this Soviet player has enough of a ground army. I would love to see an airfield get added on. He did add on a crane at some point, but the crane is so far back, he's not going to be able to utilize the crane for repairs. Of course, the crane will be safe from getting sniped all the way back there, but that's the trade-off you may make. The repairs are much harder to execute on. Ooh, trying to sap away. These Guardian tanks getting awfully low. Hammer tanks with the superior range of the leech beam. Going to actually force the battle lines backwards a little bit. Toxin drop on that building may be necessary here, as we saw that earlier in this game. Cleared out some of the infantry. Cryo shot fires off. It's going to be forcing the entire Soviet army to disengage. No splits and dodges there, but that would have been probably a bit of a bad engagement if he tried to split and engage around the cryo shot. And now we have our first Athena cannon out. And let's just do a quick check, because if we have an Athena cannon and we don't have Twin Blades, we're getting nervous for our Soviet player. Okay, so he starts the airfield, but again, two Athena cannons are already out, so a bit of a delayed response from Edka. Unfortunately here, uh, these Riptides, I think they got sent the wrong way. They got pathed the wrong way. Free repairs onto the hammer tanks, maybe a couple of free weapons as well, depending on who actually got the kill. Vindicators heading to the north. One bridge has been sniped, but three bridges still remain. Airfield does get spotted just as it finishes up. Is that cryo shot ready again already? I'm not sure what these Vindicators are doing other than scouting. Cryo shot coming down on top of that harvester wouldn't be a surprise. But it just hasn't happened yet. Ah, the cryocopter was just a little bit late to the party. And uh, Vindicator is going to be getting chased away. Cryocopter doesn't have time to go for the freeze. And Seaport is still here, but we have yet to see the first aircraft carrier emerge. Ultra torpedoes fire off. No second Akula to help finish off this naval yard. So whatever's building will finish most likely. And it looks like it is going to be an aircraft carrier. We'll see if that is what is leaving port. No, an Assault Destroyer. Okay, all right. Assault Destroyer comes on out. Cryocopter trying to put a little bit of pressure on the economy. Takes down that Harvester. 
And Apollo needs to get out of there so that he does not... Oh, that was a money toxin shot. That was a toxin shot to rival a cryo shot. He almost gets an Athena cannon there. One Guardian tank, not a bad kill. Would be great if he could leech down all of these multi-gunner turrets while the army can't really engage. The building wasn't cleared out, and the conscripts don't manage to clear it out, so the army does pull back. Uh, I don't know. At some point, you're going to have to do something. Right now, the Allied player is going to be able to outrange the Soviet player. And the longer that goes on, the worse it gets for the Soviet player. Although this is some free damage on the aircraft carrier. One set of Ultra Torpedoes is still here. So that aircraft carrier nearly dead as soon as it spawns in. And these Akulas can be microed. One more shot to take it down. Goodbye to the aircraft carrier. And that was a magnificent kill for that Akula sub. I don't know that it's going to be enough to swing the game, but all right. This is the start of the Soviets actually being able to hit back. One Athena cannon goes down. Daki has lost his advantage. That artillery advantage it was completely one-sided, but now the Dreadnought is here, and there is an opportunity for him to get some more missiles out. He keeps changing targets which now that he's shrunken down, this is a bit unfortunate because those missiles just don't do much damage at all. Ultra torpedoes fire off. Another assault destroyer steps on out. No MiGs, no twin blades. Cryocopter takes a lot of damage. Cryocopter goes down. A good kill there. Daki losing some units right on the edge of range there. Those missiles are awfully large for such a small dreadnought. And uh, hey... Getting the gun of an assault destroyer wouldn't be a bad move for these hammer tanks. Cryo shot fires off directly on top of that dreadnought. He's trying to swim away from the center of that icy beam, and it's just not enough of a freeze. Bullfrogs come in, and this is an absolute mess for both players. The Soviet player and the Allied player both uh, taking some heavy losses, but honestly, Ebka is doing a fantastic job of holding off this Allied force. He is crushed through so much Allied advantage, and the only real downside is that now he has lost his dreadnoughts, lost his artillery. And wow, that is a that is a big daddy space cable here to witness this fight between these two. What looked like a big explosive army match has got just kind of turned into like artillery wars with neither player really wanting to engage with their main army and only wanting to fight around the edges of the map. Not directly in the middle, which is where the big ground armies actually are. Man, another toxin drop. If these if these toxin drops could come in while the hammer tanks reposition, this could be a win for the Soviet players. I don't know if you want to take this fight if you don't have some kind of support power to uh, to help even things up because the combination multi gunner turrets, jabs, and mirage tanks. I mean, mirage tanks don't have a lot of health, but they do just blast through enemy units so incredibly quickly. Cryocopter goes down. This is a lot of mirages. This is so many hammers, though. This is this is actually a pretty a pretty crazy number of hammer tanks from Ebka. You definitely don't normally see these numbers from a Soviet player. Normally, the big fight has already happened when you when you get to this level of hammer tank production. The refinery going to be going down. Combination V4 and Akula subs getting the kill. Toxins come in, and this is the opportunity. The Kirov is sort of on the north side of the map, on the left side, making its way around. And I don't know. You drop the toxins, but now the, the hammer tanks aren't really getting in on the action. So this does push the front line back. I cannot believe how much this game has turned around from Daki's control. This is the guy who had artillery minutes before his opponent and is just getting outblasted by his opponent. Late eco recovery attempt by Daki out there on the water. And the Kirov is going to use all of the bullets of that Apollo, but fortunately there is also an IFV here. 
Uh, one IFV may not actually be enough. Is that is that Apollo just literally out of missiles and or out of ammo and now has no place to land? The big fight is coming in. Athena's cannons are here, mirages, but it's gonna be the Cryo Geddon to save the day. Who cares if you can micro? Who cares if you can macro? when you have got a cryo get in to do all of your work for you. And in this case, the victory goes to the cryo get in. Only a couple of Mirage tanks left, but even fewer hammer tanks are here on the front line. And it's a story that we've seen before. This victory belongs to the icy beam from the sky. Bears coming in for the roar, jabs being kept safe as these Mirage tanks keep pressing that front line forward. They may not be able to deal with anything out on the water, but they can deal with everything on the land, and there is no opposition. Two Guardian tanks mixed into this fight, two jabs as well. Maybe we need to add a resources lost tab because that would have just exploded for the Soviet player as he lost like 20 grand worth of hammer tanks. A little bit of counterattack coming in here from Ebka. This might kind of turn into a base race. The Dreadnought uh, was never dealt with. The, what is that, the third Dreadnought of the game? Never actually dealt with. And these couple of hammer tanks managed to sneak around the side so they can't blast through units and buildings as fast as Mirage tanks, but Mirage tanks can't shoot up. The Apollo wasn't able to refuel, so if he never got another airfield, these Twin Blades can slowly but surely blast through this entire army. The Super Reactor takes down a couple of them, and Ebka may actually do this in the face of an Icy Ray, which almost won the game for this allied player. Ebka is going for the kill with what few units he has remaining. One Mirage versus three hammers the hammers will win that fight and the resources are drying up for both players in terms of number of active harvesters we've got at least two for the soviet player oh actually yeah he, he re-established the refinery in the middle of the map so he's got two refineries that's pretty okay he does have an oil derrick as well both players still have those oil derricks from the early part of the game Terror Drone might get the infect on that fully heroic Mirage, but no, barely doesn't. One Mirage killing off the last remnants of the Hammer Tank stab backstabby force along the edges of the map. And this allied player did actually manage to hold on to two refineries. I thought he only had one, but he has two working refineries, soon to be three working refineries and an oil derrick. So his income is actually... Okay, both players, despite losing multiple refineries each, have made it through with okay economies. Stingray does go down. Bullfrog's guarding this dreadnought. An apt decision for sure. Both players thrown into a very bizarre game this late, you know, approaching the 20-minute mark, and they're probably in... in territory that it's not very familiar. Stingray taking a little bit of friendly fire there. And Bullfrog stepping way outside of their comfort zone, trying to chase down these Vindicators. Uh, I'm not sure that that's a good move. One Bullfrog versus Vindicators with a airfield for support. Fortunately, these Stingrays are at least going to have be bought enough time to maybe get something done. Harvester is going to be pulled off the line for at least a moment, and it's going to take the Stingrays about a year to deal with that refinery. MCV goes down. Bye-bye to the Soviet MCV. I think the Crusher Crane also already went down. So that is it for the production of the uh, Soviet player, unless he can get out another MCV from this naval yard, which is going to be his primary concern in this moment. This game went from uh, slow buildup and like very passive match into pretty explosive, crazy action. And now we're in this weird, prolonged end game. What is this Dreadnought firing at? Why is he not killed off this ore refinery yet? Now I don't think he has the range to kill off the ore refinery. Vindicator's coming in. Wait for the freeze and then we'll get a kill on a heroic Dreadnought. Does bomb split and gets the fully heroic Vindicator as well. 
so close to victory was Ebka. And, uh, well, he still has an opportunity to get out that uh, MCB. I don't know that he actually has. Yes, he has. He, he managed to get it out. So, I mean, that's five grand down the drain. Ebka still with four and a half thousand in the bank, partially because he's had essentially no production and only harvesters. Ooh, Sentry Gun and the Refinery both going to be able to get frozen and destroyed. That leaves the Sentry Gun. I don't know. Might as well kill the Sentry Gun. Especially if you're bomb splitting. Decent amount of orange on the map, but it's mostly just like buildings that have been captured. And at this point, it is a one refinery, one oil derrick Soviet player versus a four refinery allied player. Doki almost let this game get away from him, but he managed to bring it back. Oh, a V4 on the high ground, instantly frozen. And the hero of this allied player is definitely the cryo weaponry. Ugh, it all comes down to if that one cryo Geddon had been split away from and dodged, then this game would have would have gone to the Soviet player almost certainly. I mean, it almost went to the Soviet player even with that. But uh, if he had been able to dodge away from that cryo Geddon, and as soon as the cryo Geddon is finished, you know that it's got, uh, you know, 270 second timer or whatever it is, but you know you've got a couple of minutes before it can fire off again, and that's your opportunity. That's your moment. Does he not know about this water expansion? Is that what's going on? He must not, unless he's got a cryo get in his pocket and he's ready to drop it. V4 gets another shot off. V4 gets eliminated by those Riptides. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to press the fast forward button. We'll see if anything interesting actually happens in the next minute or so. But it kind of feels a little bit... And Ebka has now actually spent through his entire bank. So his entire bank is, is gone. Riptide's coming in. Stingray's nice last-ditch attempt there. I love the overcharge from this Stingray. Oh, Riptide still gets the kill there. Stingray dies. I love that last-ditch attempt with the overcharge as the Riptides are rushing towards that frozen naval yard. And, yeah, there goes the production. So it is going to be a three-refinery plus oil derrick uh, Soviet player, which again, pretty solid income, but not really in comparison to a four refinery allied player who never lost their tech. Although he never rebuilt this refinery, so he is down to three refineries. Bullfrogs, if only they could shoot down. If bullfrogs were quad cannons, then they would actually be able to do a little bit of something, but Super Reactor and Ore Refinery are about to be shut down, and realistically, there is not much the Soviet player could do if his Bullfrogs weren't on the opposite side of the map. The six Bullfrogs, if they hadn't been in the very southern side of the island, then maybe they could have done something about this, but that's one of those things where late in the game, map awareness often goes out the window. And, uh, yeah, these bullfrogs are going to show up as the Vindicator blows up that super reactor. A super ice explosion. And, yeah, the bullfrogs do get the kill on the Vindicator. But, of course, oh, actually, the cryocopters are going to even escape. But, of course, it doesn't really matter because the refinery and the Tier 2 just got knocked down again. Very expensive buildings. And the bank is building for Ebka, but that's not because his income is fantastic. His bank is building because he has no production. Uh, down to a very small number of buildings, mostly refineries and maybe a power plant or two. And then also, oh, he's actually low on power now. Uh, and also the MCV, but not a lot of buildings there for Ebka. A uh, sad, slow finish to this one. Daki holding on to the game after uh, he got it back with that big, big cryo get in. Refinery goes down. Nicely done. Daki struggling to actually clean this game up, which is... Oh, well, that Riptide goes down. Did he just friendly fire? I think the second torpedo just 
fired as the uh, as the turn animation happened, and he accidentally just friendly fired his buddy there. One terror drone. It is a uh, a nice idea there. Okay, nice terror drone micro there to shut down these units. And, uh, well, this MCV may actually get a couple of kills here. Kills the Mirage tank, which is nice. Second Mirage does get infected with a Terror Drone. And, uh, oh, the MCV is going to get the crush anyways. So that Terror Drone not getting much more for its life. Shrink on the MCV. And once again, it's an impressive number of dots on the minimap. But when six or seven of them are Bullfrogs, then uh, it just sort of doesn't matter. Riptide's going to be getting some shots off here. Mirage Tank and Assault Destroyer helping out in this fight as well. That Assault Destroyer ensuring that no real damage is done. The GG gets called, and Daki has been defeated. That will do it for that game number one. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber signing out.